A story by Dorothy Carter and John Monroe. How do you like it so far? Very much. So do I. It always helps to put the title down first. Then you can take the rest of the week off. We did that last week. Mm -hmm. I don't suppose we should do it again, huh? Come on, we've got a little momentum started. Let's not lose it. Okay. Okay. We're agreed that our basic premise is about insecurity, not actually insecurity itself, but what it causes people to do, the dramatic, poignant, the sadly funny. John, what are you doing? I'm pacing. Looks more like creeping. Well, this office gets smaller every day. Why don't we use yours? There's not room for the two of us in mine. How's it coming? In anguish and torment. Good. Don't trust it if it comes easy. Creative effort is like childbirth, slow and painful. Have you ever given birth to a child, Hamilton? Please, let's not argue. Hamilton conditions here are intolerable. There simply is not room in this office for two people. Well, that's not my fault. You two wanted to work together. Hamilton, you are a wonderful person, but you are not marvelous. John, let's go to my apartment. That's a very good idea. You won't work there. You'll sit around and enjoy yourselves. What's your telephone number? 874-1834. If anyone wants us, Hamilton, we'll be at 874-1834. You better stay here if you want to get any work done. You want to bring the manuscript? I think I have it memorized. See you later, Hamilton. Goodbye. See, it's when people don't pay attention to me that I get upset. <laughs> Mr. Monroe, please. John Monroe. Mr. Monroe is not in his office. Oh, uh, has he gone to lunch already? He's been out all morning, but he left the number where he can be reached. Um, may I have it, please? 874-1834. 874-1834. Uh, thank you, operator. Do you know what time it is? 11.32. Two solid hours, and we haven't come up with one single dramatic, poignant, or sadly funny thing that insecure people do. I have, however, thought of at least seven surefire ways to drive Hamilton Greeley out of his mind. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm sitting here working, and you're having fun. <coughs> Hello? Uh, Hello. Is this an office? No, this is a private residence. Who is this, please? Uh, is Mr. Monroe there? Yes, he is. Just a moment. John, call for you. <coughs> Hello, this is John Monroe. Who's this? <laughs> very festive this evening. Oh. Is anything wrong? No. Nothing very earth-shaking. I'd rather not discuss it right now. Oh. What sort of a day did you have? Well, as Hamilton would put it, we sat around all day wasting time thinking. We? Mm hmm. Dorothy Carter and I, we're doing a story. Didn't I tell you? No, you didn't. Well, we are. Dorothy Carter and I, doing a story. 
Together. I know. I called you for lunch today. Oh. You with the hang-up. Please, John, I'd rather not discuss it right now. Oh, oh for heaven's sake. <laughs> well, you know how small my office is. Dorothy's is even smaller. Please, John. So we decided to work at her apartment. You and Dorothy have worked together before. Yes, twice. Once in 1965, once in 1962. Of course. So there's no point in making a big thing of it. It's just all this secrecy. Don't you just hate that? What? All this secrecy. I mean, a man comes home on the 543, has his martini, and then tells his wife, openly, mind you, that he's attracted to another woman. Well, that's one thing. That's human nature. Any civilized, intelligent wife can understand that. I thought you said you didn't want to discuss it. I'm not discussing it. I'm merely commenting on it. Are you suggesting that there's something going on between Dorothy Carter and me? All this nonsense about small offices. Well, that's ridiculous. Balzac never complained about a small office. Or de Maupassant or Mark Twain. Nothing ever goes on between writers. Not even writing, sometimes. You'd think that two creative talents like you and Dorothy Carter could come up with a better rationale than a small office. Writers always look at each other with a professional eye. The roast is ready. I'll get you dinner. And they would never develop any kind of a thing with the... I don't think she really does want to discuss it. <laughs> you see, when two people that work together, as long as Dorothy Carter and I have, well, it becomes a whole different relationship. Why, Dorothy and I don't even exist for each other, except, uh, except on paper. You do believe that, don't you, Ellen? Ellen? How serious can it be? She's asleep. What I hate most about arguing with women is that usually you lose. And when you win, you get a pain in the stomach. That's guilt, you see. And most of the time, you don't even have that heady memory of something to feel guilty about. We're here, working again, for the same logical and completely forthright reasons as before. The only difference is, today, I have a pain in my stomach. Well, I have a surprise for you. We've done three pages. Exactly 1,122 words, most of them fairly amusing. How's that? Oh, good. Very good. Are you all right? Well, I'm fine. It's been an hour since you said a word. I was ready to put a mirror to your lips. Well, I was just thinking about illustrating. You know, for the 1,100 words. OK. Go ahead. Create. I'll uh, rough out the next sequence. All right. <laughs> I swear, this is the first time in my life I have ever looked at the legs of another writer. It's the annual parent-teacher's day, next week on the 14th. Mm-hmm. Our class is putting on a play. Yes, dear. The Princess and the Pea. Mm. Do you know that story? What story, dear? The Princess and the Pea. Oh. Of course. All the parents are coming. Shall I reserve two chairs for you and Daddy? Two chairs? Well, you are my parents. I, I really couldn't say, dear. It's up to your father. Well, can I call him at the office? He's not there. He's somewhere else. Well, where can I call him? I wouldn't. There are times when your father hates to be disturbed. I know, but we do it all the time. When you get a little older, you'll understand. Understand what? The way life can be. The strange twists and quirks. I'm only interested in chairs. I realize that. Innocence. 
if I don't make a reservation for one parent, two parents, three parents? Three parents? Well, some of the kids are loaded. I have to reserve chairs. Otherwise, you might be stuck way in the back of the room near the blackboard. What's it going to be, Mom? You'll just have to be patient, dear. Sometimes it's woman's role to suffer in silence. Well, I'm not suffering. I just want a simple yes or no. I don't know. Mother, there comes a time when a person has to make a definite decision. You have to lay it on the line. A definite decision. Absolutely. You have to know where you stand. Or sit. One chair or two. Lydia, dear, finish your lunch. I'm going to take you back to school. Well, what's the decision? I'm going to town this afternoon, and I'll find out. Well, at least have some progress. I hope so, darling. You must be kidding, Alan. John and me? Oh, come now, Dorothy. There's always been a little thing between you and John. What sort of thing? You can't deny you have feelings for him. Well, of course not. I think he's a great cartoonist. Obviously, the two of you have drifted into a situation without even realizing it. Look at the record. We have a record. You're always working together. Last week, 1965, 1962. You do admire each other. Well, I suppose so. You find him intelligent? Of course. Sensitive, perceptive? Yes. And attractive? Attractive. Blue eyes, little dimples, nice little smile. No, he's not bad. He's attractive. Okay. Mm -hmm. Of course. And, and you respect him. That's very important. It certainly is. I couldn't care about a man I didn't respect. There, you see? See what? You said it. What did I say? Well, there's no point in denying it. You just admitted it. Uh-huh. You were frank and you were honest. Well, I'm too fond of you to lie to you. I knew it. I just knew it. Well, why didn't you say something before? You must have known. I swear, you just convinced me. Well, at least it's out in the open. Do you want a drink? I do. Yes, thank you. Have you convinced John about this, too? I mean, how does he feel? I think he's confused. I can understand that. Happy days. Cheers. Hello, Hamilton. Hello, Dorothy. May I come in? Why, well, Alan, what are you doing here? Just visiting. Why? I mean, usually John is here. What do you mean, usually? He's been here three times since 1962. Well, where is he now? On his way home. Well, where are the pages? We're not finished yet. Not finished? What have you two been doing here all week? What did I say? The Princess and the P, hmm? Right. One performance only. Of course, you're playing the princess. I'm sure you'll do it beautifully. I didn't even have to read for the part. They said I was a natural. Imagine that, Ellen. Our daughter. An actress. She might even get interested in acting, go on and have a great career. I'm going to Yale and be a history major. And in years to come, wherever we are, together or apart, we'll take great pride in her success. Well, I don't know if I'd go that far. How about the chairs, Daddy? Oh, yes, the chairs. I... I don't know. Honestly, if I'd have thought there'd be this much trouble over the chairs, I never would have taken the part. Can't we make a decision? Oh, I've made a decision. But not about chairs. Don't blame me if you find yourself facing the blackboard. May I be excused, please? Uh, you may. Do we really have to make a firm reservation? younger, I'd throw myself down on the floor and start kicking. We'll give you a decision tonight, dear. And just leave a note on my pillow. That's not complicated. I'll leave a note on my pillow. It'll have little boxes, like one chair, two chair, three chairs, no chairs. All you have to do is check the box you want, okay? That's very efficient, dear. 
You don't even have to sign her to say love. Just check a box. Boy, what a person has to go through for chair reservations sometimes. Well, you haven't asked me what kind of a day we had. I know what kind of a day you had. I went to see Dorothy Carter at her apartment. Oh? Where was I? You had just left, but we talked about you all afternoon. You talked about me all afternoon? Dorothy Carter is infatuated with you. Dorothy Carter is infatuated with me? Will you please stop repeating everything I say? I'm sorry. She thinks you're sensitive, attractive, and she admires you very much. Helen? Helen, I suggest that you're letting your imagination run away with you. Don't talk to me as if I were a child, John. Dorothy Carter came straight out and admitted that she cared about you. I suggest that you misunderstood the spirit of what she was saying. You should have seen the look on her face when I said I knew there'd always been a thing between you. I suggest that you... Stop that. I will not stand here and be suggested to in that manner. I'm well aware of what she can offer you and where I fail. Oh, Ellen. She's a writer, isn't she? Well, what's that got to do with anything? Isn't she? Yes, she's a writer. She's a free spirit, interesting personality, witty. And she has very nice legs. I suppose you're going to deny that. No, no, I'd, I'd be less than truthful if I were to deny that. You see? We women may not be the smartest creatures on earth, but we certainly know when we're no longer wanted. Ellen, will you please listen to me? You are wanted. You think I have no pride. I state you? that unequivocally and with no fear of contradiction. You think I try to keep you when, when you were me? fighting desperately I'm for your freedom. I'm trying to explain to you that you've I misinterpreted to hold you respect John. and professional admiration for way. passion and, and infatuation. You to her and you think you can be happy with She won't listen. I won't be an obstacle. You're I'll being totally unreasonable, aside. that's all. I'll merely step aside and you may be free to do as you please. Okay. What? You're right. I knew it. Everything you said, 100% right. I just knew it. Well? It's just possible that we've been planning too much, analyzing too much. I think you're right. I think you're right, too. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. I don't think we even touched. When we started, we had a fantasy situation, but it was pure. That's true. It was, it was real. Now here, look, here are my notes. <laughs> you can read my writing. Uh, you're right, it's all there. We shouldn't complicate the story. It should be allowed to happen. I agree. How does it feel to have had the best years of a woman's life? It could become unwieldy, cumbersome. Even the drawing should be free, uninhibited. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. If I ever have to go away, darling, you'll be all right. Miss Carter is a lovely woman. Free. Freedom is the word. Obviously, women can't resist him. They fall in love, then turn over their royalties to him. John, do you have another pencil? Sure, coming up. Feel the electricity going through that pencil? You feel it, big fella? And wood doesn't even conduct. Thanks. Dorothy.
Ellen's crazy. Ridiculous. How's it coming? I think she ought to know, don't you? I'd like to be there when you tell her. Hamilton? If anyone wants us, we'll be at my house. Where are the pages? Whatever they're doing, I got a feeling it can't be published. Ellen, it's going to be difficult to tell you. I understand. It's pointless for us to go on like this. Life has its winners and its losers. We tried to see it your way, really we did. But Dorothy and I don't feel anything for each other. Nothing at all, I'm sorry. We even tried kissing. It was ridiculous. Well, there's no need to make I it. I can't believe it. Actually, Dorothy's just like one of the fellas. Well, let's not beat it to death, John. I may have a future. Of course, John, Dorothy's very attractive. There has never been anyone in my life but you. Oh, look at it logically, Ellen. A man who writes should never be married to a woman with talent. Of course, John. We belong together. I should have realized it from the beginning. I just want to confirm your reservations. You checked this for three chairs? Yes, you're right, dear. One mother, one father, and... And one friend. Okay, whatever you say. You're absolutely sure that's all? Well, I hope so. John? Yes, dear, that's all. 